Hi, this is Tim, and welcome to Talks with Tim. Did you know I must have deleted this channel? I actually went a full year without posting a single video on this channel. I know, all my heaters out there, they're getting ready to write in the comments that I should have deleted it. Go ahead, I love you guys. I smile right before I hit the delete button on your comments. And I wasn't doing this in a fit of rage. This was a calculated decision. And in hindsight, I can say that I was burnt out. And I would love to say that I have the magical formula to prevent burnout again, but I can't. But what I can do is identify some repeating patterns that have happened over and over again, where I'm like, ah, I needed to make a course correction and I totally missed it. And I think this is important to share because I've walked so many of you through starting your careers and some of us have really walked together for near a decade now and I've watched you go through these cycles of burnout and all of a sudden be like, you know, I just don't want to work at my job anymore or I don't think I want to run a business anymore. I think I want to go just work for someone or I think automation stinks now and I just want to go buy groceries or even worse. Now, the first thing I need to do is explain what burnout is in my situation because I have one of the coolest side jobs there is. I mean, really, I help people get into our industry or I like to say I raise my competition. So what is burnout? Most people watching this channel like a good math equation. So burnout happens when the effort you put into something is greater than the reward you get out of it over a certain amount of time. And that certain amount of time is important because you know we're always going to have some moment in our careers or lives or whatever that just stinks. It could be that we're in a really difficult project. Maybe we're in a project that's failing and there's all types of things that in the short term that the effort grossly outweighs the reward. But from beginning to, we'll say, end of a project, your reward should be greater than the effort you put in. Next, we need to define what the reward is because reward is not necessarily monetary. As we've shared many times, there is a negative financial return on this channel. So if you're watching this thinking, well, I want to start a YouTube channel so I can have it easy like Tim is, well then please contact me because I will definitely help you. Because in the end, if you are truly in this for the long term, then you're going to have to find a reward that is something other than monetary. And that is going to be helping people. And going back to my burnout, that's the part of the equation that I forgot. What is the reward? And now we need to add a few more variables to our equation because burnout happens when the effort you put in plus the BS times the emotional multiplier is greater than the rewards you get out. Now, what is BS? You can probably figure out what it stands for, but it are the things that cloud our judgment of determining effort and reward. Cash flow deadlines, upset customers, projects that have gone into the gutter, neighbors upset because you're burning the midnight oil. And for me, it was the commenters that got to me to the point that I resented every video I had ever made. And it would seem that the best thing to do would be to break away from the BS. And that's what I tried to do. I actually unsubscribed from the notifications that told me when a comment was left on one of my videos. And overnight, the stress just disappeared and I felt liberated. But when I did that, I also disengaged from you guys who were really the reason that I was doing this and began the year of silence. Now at the end of every year, we actually evaluate every single thing we do and determine what is working, what is not working, what needs just kind of a course adjustment, and what do we just need to chop? And yeah, YouTube came up. It's like, all right, this thing is dead weight. I, I'm not doing anything with it. I'm not getting any reward out of it. Should we keep it? And during my evaluation, I decided to read through the comments because I knew well, it's like, you know, the comments are a pain. And I realized that, yeah, there were a lot of hater comments out there, but I had let so many of you down that were asking great questions. Now, looking back, what could I have done differently in my equation? Because remember, effort plus 
BS times that emotional factor has to be less than the reward. I needed to adjust the emotional factor on that BS. And I always say it takes 10 good comments to offset one bad comment. And there are a lot of reasons. I mean, one, deep down inside, I really want to please all of you. I want to help all of you. I want to get you into positions that you like. And yeah, I want you all to like me, but I've got to realize, but I've got to realize that I can't please everybody. And that's why I've pushed lately that it's so important that we be able to fail and that we be able to realize that we're imperfect. I can't tell you the number of people that have told me that I need to redo this video and correct the errors in it. And if you've noticed my videos actually before and after this year of silence, the ones before, have very few errors in them. And now they actually have many more errors in them. And the reason is it's not that I was doing it perfect before, but I would sit there and redo the same part over and over and over trying to get it perfect for everybody. And so worried that there would be a commenter that would just judge anything that was wrong. And now I put the mistakes in there and I have a whole different group that appreciates me now because I get messages all the time from people that are like, Hey, I appreciate that you leave the mistakes in your video because I got to the same place and I couldn't figure out how to go fix it. I found your video and it showed exactly what to do. Thanks for not making a perfect video. And that's what brought me back to making YouTube videos is I learned to embrace my imperfections. And that changed my viewpoint towards my hater group. Now let's make sure we define what a hater is because I love constructive criticism. In fact, I love a good argument, but a hater leaves a comment with intent of making themselves feel better by putting down your work. And honestly, if somebody tells me my, my presentation material stinks and that I'm a crappy creator, that doesn't bother me nearly as much as the friendly haters. And we've all seen them and it's not just on my channel it's on the new guy that is posting what he's proud of on linkedin or even in person when you're looking at someone and you're proud that you got the project done and they're like maybe you could do this better next time or my favorite one is i can tell that you have a vested interest in helping build the next generation but perhaps you could take down that video and do it this way. The small jabs that slowly beat you down. Then they'll usually sprinkle a little positive at the end of it just to make themselves feel better. In fact, YouTube allows you to hold certain comments if they have certain words in them. And I've really thought about putting perhaps, maybe, but, However, and all of those that usually mean somebody's blowing up smoke up my rear and then's getting ready to hammer with what I'm doing wrong, I thought about holding all those comments. But okay, enough of the rant. What can we do about it? The most important thing is don't forget your reward when you're evaluating if your reward is greater than your effort. And for me, the reward is helping people. And it's not actually just helping people. I get questions all the time with things I don't know. And those questions push me because I'm like, all right, well, how would we do that? And I've got to go and I've got to figure it out. So it keeps me curious. It keeps me kind of my mind going. It makes it where I'm not doing the same thing over and over and over again. Because yeah, if you're not happy with whatever you're doing, the worst thing you can do is continue doing it again and again and again. Also, make sure your reward is not fun because this is probably something that I work a lot with people on trying to kind of get their hand around what they actually want. Because they'll be like, yeah, I want to start an automation company. It looks like a lot of fun. I'm like, okay, well, you know, it is fun to build anything. It is fun to do anything new. But if your reward is fun, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, it goes from being fun to being normal. Now you may still enjoy it, but it's no longer fun now. So fun is not a good reward. Also nowhere in there did I say that money shouldn't be part of the reward. It just shouldn't be the entire reward. Reevaluate your emotional multiplier as I called it and adjust it to what really matters. I'll get a negative comment and I'll tell Amber, 
you won't believe what this guy said to me. And she'll be like, well, you know that isn't true. And I'll be like, you don't understand. But really, I took maybe a minute to read this faceless person's comment. And I spend, what, 20, 22 hours a day with Amber? What's that? I don't know, 12, 1400 minutes, well, however many minutes it is. Amber's feedback should have a thousand to one ratio compared to what somebody comments on YouTube. You ever had a really horrible day and you go home and your kids are smiling, happy to see you? Which one really matters? That's what I mean. Adjust that emotional multiplier so the things that really matter rise to the top. And after that, we need to work on some self-care. And I'm working with some people to talk to about this, but we need to have really some weekly breaks. And that's not the weekend. I mean, I get it. One, one I mean, if you're working really hard in the week, chances are you, you know, you, you've got tons of things to do at home when you get off, but we need some weekly time off or some weekly mental breaks. We may even need some daily mental breaks. <laughs> we'll have a project deadline that is like, just we're right up against the wall on. And Amber will come in and I'll be mopping the floor. And she'll be like, well, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm mopping, I needed a break. You've just gotta switch your mind off for a while sometimes. And one, this is where volunteering comes in great use for. And don't volunteer for something in your industry, volunteer something completely out of your industry, something maybe even completely out of your comfort zone, something that is just physically exhausting and mentally restful. And then we've got to start having some downtime in between projects. And this is what I really, I've got a few people in mind I want to talk to and hopefully get them on. You know, we start a project and there's all this planning and then you're spending all this money and cash flow is horrible. And then there's design issues and you're, you know, you're just trying to swim through this project and see the light at the end of the tunnel. And we come off that edge and we crash down when the project's over. And what do we see? but the next project right in front of us, and we're often doing it again. And this isn't mentally healthy. And we have planned downtime for machines that run wide open, you know, 24 seven. Companies have got to come up with some planned downtime to work this out. And this is not a weekend or the vacation time. This is some type of regiment to help keep people mentally healthy because I see insanely too many talented people that are just like, I just don't know if I can do this anymore. And then of course they quit. And then the companies are like, well, I don't know why he quit. I mean, well, d did you not do an exit interview? Huh, that, that's for a whole other podcast. Employees are our most valuable asset. We've got to figure out how to maintain them as good as we maintain one of our top of the line machines. Also going back to the reward, your reward should be greater than your effort, but your reward can change over time. And that doesn't just mean a pay raise. I mean, I've changed over time. The things that I value have changed over time. And yeah, my dreams have changed over time. And so that shifts what I consider an ideal reward. I mean, maybe you are or were, whichever way you want to look at it, the best PLC5 programmer in the world in the universe, the best period. That doesn't mean you can't adapt and become a decent control logics programmer. Also notice, I didn't say the best control logics programmer. There is nothing wrong with going from at least appearing to be the best to being decent and happy. So remember, your reward should be greater than your effort over a certain amount of time. But make sure that you watch the BS and keep that emotional factor in check. This is a series I'm thinking about doing long term to help the health of our industry. Now, I am not a health expert in any way. I have experienced burnout. I have experienced some insanely stressful situation. I have experienced probably failure beyond most of your imagination. But I'd like to find some people that could give some beneficial insights that we could share and help all of us. So if you have anybody that you think would be good, feel free to put them down in the comments or you can always reach out to me. Till next time.
Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.